the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of the Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about our favorite hobby, and that being sim racing. Happy Hump Day Wednesday to everybody. Guess what day it is? That's my favorite shirt for a Wednesday. And here we are in the middle of the week just to go over and talk about what's going on in the wonderful world of sim racing. So I do like to sometimes uh, give you guys just pictures just for the entertainment value. And today's picture comes to us from Spatial. It's been a little debate in the chat. But uh, in Spatial's opinion, here's a shot of him at Nordschleife in what he feels is a proper race car. Fiat 500, 68 I think he said it was. 110 mile an hour max speed. Uh, anyway, microphone, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, hopefully you guys heard my intro. Uh, hopefully we're doing better with the audio now. But there we go. So what's wrong with this picture? Is that is that the way I should pose the question? Or is it more of one of those, uh, let's just get a, you know, what, what, what would you think? Uh, a race at Nordschleife in a car that only can do 110 miles an hour. How long will it take to, to get around the track? But thank you, Spatial, for sending that in. Entertainment for everybody today. So here we are. Big day in sim racing. A uh, lot, of, lot of little things going on, actually, and some of them are rather important. So let's talk about what's going on, starting off with Gran Turismo. This is at their Twitter feed, but there is a full write-up if you clink it. Clink it? Click it. Uh, tonight is patch 1.19 for GT Sport, and with it is going to come Circuit de la Sarth, also known as Le Mans. Uh, and this is a big deal. This is a track that that game certainly needs. Uh, that event is coming up next month. Uh, we can almost say this month. And it's a beautiful rendition. I saw some chat in the, in the commentary thinking, oh, well, didn't they just change? Oh, there you go. There's that Fiat 500. Uh, didn't they just change the layout uh, at, at Le Mans? And will that change it? So in addition to the patch and the track, there are some new cars. We have a car list here. Fiat 500, as we've seen, Jag, uh, 88 Jaguar XJR9, uh, Lamborghini Mira, Sauber Mercedes C9. So I believe there are a couple of 89... Uh, uh, the, here we go, the 92. So we have some Group C era cars that we have, like, seeing in this picture. We've got the Nissan, the Sauber, and the Jaguar. Jaguar. Uh, actually, the first Jaguar listed, that was the one. Uh, that one right there. Jaguar XJR988. I believe that's the Silk Cut Jag, if I'm not mistaken. So new cool content that will be out tonight. Tonight, you will be able to download that onto GT Sport if you own it. And that's very cool. Very cool. Uh, and we talked about it going into Project Cars 2 as well. So lots of Le Mans action going on right now. The Reliant the Reliant versus the Fiat 500. Actually, no, that wouldn't even be fair. The Fiat's actually a respectable car. The Reliant is a nightmare of a car. But boy, did we have fun with that one, uh, Michael Clark. Uh, Group C, though. You know, going back to this topic, and, you know, Billy just chimed in on Group C. But Group C is, like, literally my favorite era of racing i remember when the group c mod came out for nascar 2003 how it like really literally changed uh racing for a lot of people and got us into cars there we go here we go that's what we're talking about right there yes the best sights sounds smells and feel that racing maybe ever even achieved uh, Project Cars Yorkie has another guide out there. So if you're looking just to get tips and tricks from people who know what they're doing in sims, and again, I always tell you whether it's for Project Cars 2 or iRacing, it doesn't matter. Usually driver training stuff, usually information on car handling and, and race etiquette and all those kind of things, they transfer from sim to sim. It's not quite the same as dealing with a particular car, particular physics, as much as overall concepts of racing. So in this one, he's explaining Live Track 3.0, and weather seating and how that can impact your session or the event you're entering. So I find that at Project Cars Twitter feed, and then they've got the full write-up, which I hadn't clicked on yet. And you can read the whole story and watch the video and get all the information that they're telling you. Thank you, Yorkie, for continuing those. And I know a lot of you guys turn to that for information and little tips and tricks. Uh, F1, the final qualifying event, has finished. So this is this is now, you know, pretty much getting down to the end we're gonna have a big draft day coming up and we're gonna see all of the drivers getting officially taken by teams 
And it's going to be really interesting to see what the eSport F1 world brings us in the future. It's going to be a little different in concept than others. You know, most of the others, uh, the teams enter as teams. Most of the others, you know, it's, it's structured in the old version of sim racing. This is the new version. This is, hey, we are the various teams of Formula One, whether you're talking Force India and McLaren. We are drafting the best sim racers and then entering our team against our competition. Could be very interesting. So we do have the leaderboard, and I'm just going to click through it. This is round four on all platforms. Let's go platform by platform and go through the top three, though. Uh, on the Xbox, F15 Tornado, Tornado, Y-Corns, and G2. Logitech G2 Isaac are one, two, three uh, on the Xbox. PlayStation 4, XX Pro, XXX46. Not too much of a gamer tag there, huh? Uh, Cosmic Gill and Epic Gamer 1571 are our three big winners. So you can see the difference in names when we look at those. And then when we get to the PC, we've got ACR, Avid Chronic Racing, Teffy, number one, RC Ure, number two, and G2 Logitech G2. Two guys up on the leaderboard. Nestor in third. I believe Nestor's already locked in. So that might leave the door open for some other drivers. So. Anyway, uh, Codemasters, we talked already, and we already congratulated, um, uh, what was his name, Jonah, ah, I can't remember his last name, on his win. Uh, let's go down here and find his name. I want to be respectful here. Uh, da, 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 Jonah P, no, no, it was harder for me to say than that. Uh, where did it go? Anyway, uh, sorry, I don't, Jonah P., uh, they do have a whole write-up. So if you go to Dirt 4, there's a whole write-up on the whole how the whole thing played out, including an uh, interview with him talking about the whole thing. So great competition that went on there. Congratulations to him. And if you want to hear and see more about it, you can check all that out via the Dirt uh, Codemasters or Dirt Twitter feed iRacing is seeing a major shock, major change up in the points series this season. Things have been all over the place with various different drivers winning. And when it's, you know, you think back in time, whether you're talking six, seven, ten years, it's really been Hutu versus Kronky, Kronky versus Hutu. These have been the two big names in the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix series. And right now, those guys are fighting to even stay on the podium to an extent. Mitchell DeJong has had a great season. He's sitting second in the points with 350 points. And that and that's a mind blow right there. Uh, Mitchell, great sim racer. But this season, he has decided he wants to be one of the best of the best. But Mac Backham has now won two races after winning at Monza and is leading the series. Mac Backham is now the man to beat in the iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series. Gregor Hutu, Martin Kroenke sitting in third and fourth place. And that is a uh, a shocker to me. Uh, someone said they're getting old. Well, to a, to an extent, you can make that argument. Uh, I don't know how old Backham is. I know DeJong's rather young. Um, sounds like a cage fighter name. <laughs> but... And it is great to see uh, when Martin Kroenke and Gregor Hutu are basically the only two guys to win races over the last five years. Uh, a few standouts be between them, but it's great to see a total change up. It's great to see that series heating up, and it means that it's going to be even more entertaining to watch as things continue to play out. Uh, congratulations, Kyle Larson. He won a big midget weekend in uh, Indiana. Uh, iRacing sponsored driver Alex Bergen um, and Howard Weaver had a big start in the late model series. And in addition to that, uh, that's actually the same thing. That's the Lima Land event right there, the, the uh, late models. So lots of stuff going on in iRacing with their championship series as well. Uh, Gregor needs to retire and move on already. Well, I'll tell you what, I bet if you see too many fourth place finishes from him we might be upon that so tonight i believe is when they're doing their their uh watch us drive with crew 2 live stream closed beta wednesday may 30th 4 p.m utc tonight is when i believe codes are being sent in the mail 
and I guess some people are having a hard time finding it. The crew, too, is aware of that. This is all ho happening overnight, so I guess be a little patient. They're working on it, and uh, they say it'll be available on Uplay in the afternoon Paris time. So if you got a code, uh, I'd love to hear about it. I, I didn't, I stupidly, stupidly ah, did not send anything in to them saying, hey, I want to get in on it. If any of you did, please let me know. Get some video. Tell us, tell us about it. Come on the show. Let us know what's going on. Um, GT Planet has a great article. This is really cool. Um, take a look at the proposed Miami GP circuit in Assetto Corsa. So, uh, let me get the name of who did the mod. Um, but what we have here, let me play the video while I try to figure out more of the story, uh, in terms of who made the mod. I, I haven't found the name, um, but this is the proposed track made for Assetto Corsa. And at this GT Planet article, you'll see some images of the area, the real life images of where they're proposing the track be. I heard another article talking about lawsuits expected by uh, the Miami uh, Board of Directors, government, whatever you want to call. They're expecting lawsuits from local residents and business owners trying to prevent the race from happening at all. But if you want to see what it might look like, should it happen, I mean, this could be amazing if we get another Formula One race here in America. They're talking about the 19 through 28 seasons. This would be a long-term 10-year contract, and it could be a very big deal. Uh, anyway, you can check that out. Find that at GT Planet. Been a while since we heard anything from the guys at Fanatic, and apparently they have some firmware update for the McLaren steering wheel. The McLaren steering wheel, if you don't remember... It actually has four paddles, two for shifting and two for something else. One of them could be a clutch uh, or a launch or something like that. Anyway, the new firmware, which will be av available, allows you to adjust a clutch bite point or put it into a clutch bite point mode. And that way you'll be able to launch just like a F1 car does. And supposedly Sim Racing Girl is going to have a video or has a video explaining how to use it. So there's uh, her talent going to use. Big deal. This is at Crash, and I've seen a few other places. But Alex Zanardi is going to make his DTM debut with a BMW at Misano. It's a one-off race right now. Uh, been a long time. And as much as Alex Zanardi is absolutely one of my superheroes uh, of, of life, uh, gosh, he's... Getting a little old. How long? Uh, how long do you keep racing? Uh, but when you're a big name, and man, this guy every time he gets in a car, he does something. Ellis Jones, two dollars for Max, two pound, two euro for Max. Hey, buddy, you hear that? Good boy. Thank you very much, Ellis. Much appreciated. Uh, so that is going on as well. Bryce, anyone going to the F1 race in Austin? I think about it every year, but then. It's just a matter of time and money. And man, they charge a lot, isn't it? Like two hundred dollars a ticket for that race. It's insane what they charge for the F one races. And I was already kind of in my mind planning on going to the F one race in Miami if they did it, even though I haven't been to to uh, Coda. Um. Paid Plays, we run a Saturday, I think it's now Friday and Saturday series on Race Room that is at a Euro-friendly time zone. I have not been able to attend the the meetings, the meetings, the races just yet, but I'd like to. I'm just getting, you know, I'm a little busy, so it's hard for me to do all of the racing and all the series that I really want to do. Uh, if I had a full-time staff, I would do nothing but race and test gear, um, but that isn't the case. <laughs> So, uh, we talked about the shifters, talked about Alex and Artie. Um, just going to mention this, just because it does kind of involve cars, and we are an automotive gaming show. Uh, sure, we're sim racing, but we're really automotive gaming, if you think about it. Um, so, anyway, the game uh, Battlefield, Call of Duty Veterans Unveil Car Combat Survival FPS Fractured Lands. So, this is actually Fractured Lands. Uh, I think we talked about this just briefly, but this is the first we've really kind of seen their intentions of what's going on. We definitely talk about a Miami uh, Simpit meetup 
if the race really happens. I, I, I We could definitely, it's far enough into the distance, it could be planned by everybody. Warning, it'll be very expensive. Miami's an expensive town. It's going to be the inaugural race, which means tickets will be hard to get. Uh, it's a, man, that is a perfect venue for a street course, though. I mean, Miami, it's, 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 it'll be beautiful. Hmm. Anyway, off topic, uh, so Fractured Lands with their car combat mode that they have, which <coughs> could be semi-entertaining. Team Sonic Racing leaked by Walmart with detailed info and first screenshots. So, it's funny how we find out about new titles and maybe we don't care so much about Sonic. I will admit it looks kind of cool, though. I'll bet you it's fun. I'll bet you you get a... We could do an Austin meetup. We could definitely talk about that. Um... But that could be a fun game, for sure. Uh, but what what marvels me, we saw this with the Project Cars 2 Le Mans footage, that it was Amazon who had already put the post. It wasn't supposed to be public, but somehow somebody found it. And there is the, the picture of the cover. It's going to be for sale. Same thing here. Walmart did the same thing, got things going, and now people are already grabbing it. And uh, we'll move on with that. Uh, you're waiting for Sean to get some shows out of the way. Oh, you'll see. Yep, yep, I gotcha when you come to film yours. Gotcha. Uh, DLC, we talked about the Ridge. DLC being available for spin tires, and it is now available. So, no more waiting. If you forgot about it, you can get in there. New map, new cars, or trucks, we should say. And that should get you more bang for your buck out of, uh... Having purchased Mud Runner Spin Tires, which is is a very fun game. I did that fu uh, once, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, PC Gamer talking about an HP mixed reality headset for just one hundred and forty nine dollars. So this is a, basically an eight hundred dollar unit that right now you can get it for one hundred and forty nine in a refurbished condition. Uh, when I get asked about VR, a lot of people want to jump to it. One of my one of my problems with it is that it's the next gen that's going to be awesome, not this gen. However, at $149, you can start dabbling in it, start playing, start experiencing it, even in its current gen, which is really Austin. Awesome. Awesome. Not Austin. <laughs> um, well, RF, we might have to do both. We might have to just do both. We'll see. We can talk about that. Uh, True Achievements is doing a giveaway. So if you would like to win a free copy of Trailblazers... Uh, they have a Trailblazers achievement page. When I did a contest once, I used this Gleam, where you can get an extra entry for all the different things. So if you follow True Achievements on Twitter, you get a point, so on and so on. That gives you more points towards uh, getting, uh, uh, entering and winning in that competition. So uh, there you go. If you're interested in that game, you don't want to pay. There's one way to possibly get it. Tech, and that was at, uh, uh, sorry about that, I didn't give the true achievements, I think I said it, but just so I'm clear, true achievements. Tech Power Up has a write-up on the new Intel Core i7-8086, and it is going to be the first 5 gigahertz processor. So, I just did a big upgrade, and uh, I'm sure that means there's going to be a big drop on prices on other things as this chip and chips like it get nearer, but that's the reality upgrading your computers. I don't care what day of the year you pick to do an upgrade the very next day you're going to hear about the next gen stuff it just keeps happening um this is a sad story microsoft laid off xbox support staff in favor of volunteers so if you're an xbox fan you know the the twitter account at xbox support and they had a handful of uh employees from uh, firma consulting that worked in the microsoft office dealing with those support issues and people. Uh, they actually had those people double time and made their main uh, uh, job to actually get the ambassadors up and working. Ambassadors is a Xbox's PR word for volunteers. Um, but basically what you saw was uh, a handful of people who were laid off in order for Microsoft to really double up their dependence on free support for Xbox products. I have a little bit of a mixed opinion. I mean, I get a lot of help from you guys, but I'm also a show on a shoestring budget. 
Um, I don't know if I feel very good about Xbox getting free labor and hire, firing people. But then again, you got to think, Microsoft just passed Google in net worth. I didn't imagine Microsoft would be able to pass Google again, but they have. So maybe it's by those kind of business practices. So anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody who helps me out, though, because I do get a tremendous amount of help. And, you know, I am trying to grow and build a company here at some point when the company's, you know, profitable like Microsoft. I like to think that I'd be able to reward everyone who, who pitches in, not look for free labor at that point. Anyway, uh, we're a little, uh, we already talked about this. Bergeron takes it all at the bull ring. Um, that's just more late model racing. I don't know how that got there. I think that's in the wrong spot. Blow through a few of these really quick. Speed Maniacs. A lot of these are from foreign countries, so we're going through translation to be able to even see it. But Speed Maniacs has an article showing off gameplay video and compound training grounds, which we talked about. We talked about the compound training grounds for MXGP Pro. Uh, I guess they have some gameplay actually showing it. You can check that out. They also have an article showing off uh, Gravel Armored Operation. Kind of reminds me of the car. Well, not the Humvee, but we, we talked about the, the the truck that's parked near me at the dealership, at the Bentley dealership. Uh, Driving Italia uh, is telling us. So this just came out. You are now going to be able to pre-order F1 2018. So we knew it was coming. We knew about it. We even had a date. But now pre-orders are going to start. Uh, as of today, for the com confirmed release date of Ox uh, August 24th, uh, if they do change the, play the price, then if it's discounted, you'll get a rebate, and if it goes up, you're locked in at the current price. That's kind of the deal of getting it early right now. Uh, this game, they are really accelerating. It's amazing. This is the fastest I've ever seen Codemasters move in my entire life. So, there you go. Just a little thought on that. Hey, maybe I need to go to the Full Sail University Broadcasting School by Dan Patrick. If you're in America and you're into sports, you know who Dan Patrick is. Probably the biggest voice. Uh, I would say face, but he's as much in radio as he is on TV. Uh, but Dan Patrick is a, a sports broadcaster. He has started a sports casting program in Florida at Full Sail University. So... If you would like to become an announcer for one of these eSport careers, you know, think if eSport is growing at this rate, they need announcers. You know, I watch a lot of MMA. You know, that guy who does the introductions, he gets paid a lot of money. The announcers on TV get a lot of pay money. eSport, think about it. eSport is like football, baseball, basketball, auto racing, soccer, all of them rolled into one because there are so many disciplines of eSport. If it grows at the current rate, you're talking about hundreds of leagues, hundreds of broadcast names. And if that's the career that you would like, you could find eSport broadcasting as lucrative as sports broadcasting was 15, 20 years ago. Because let's face it, I think that 15, 20 years ago, you know, think back to like Howard Cosell days when... Football on Sunday was the biggest thing on earth. Uh, things have changed. We're not quite as sports. We're not as focused on sports as we used to. It's time. You know, he named all of his moves, whether it's like a quarter turn or a full turn and, or, and a half turn. And I guess he only does a full turn for like championship battles. Anyway, uh, <laughs> my main point here, though, is. Esports growth and what it's doing, where we saw about the, the tournaments that are going to be on ESPN already. All of these are going to be looking for announcers. They're all going to be looking for production crews. This is a whole new horizon of employment. So if you're out there and you're disgruntled and you're young enough to change what you do, you don't even have to go to Full Sail University, although that might be the fast track to getting in. But... You don't have to be great as a sim racer, but just think about eSport and its growth and how many jobs and how much opportunity, and the ones who get there early could be the ones who are the Howard Cosells in 10 or 15 years. So there you go. There you go. Just my thought of the day. 
article here from Front Office Sports talking about why NASCAR is turning to iRacing to attract a younger, more diverse demographic to the sport. They talk about that youth or junior program for kids 13 to 16 that the that iRacing, they talk about how they've been doing the Peak Antifreeze series forever, but they are branching out with this youth program, and it's all to attract a younger, more diverse demographic to the sport. Not just the sim racing sport, but also the real-life NASCAR. Uh, Vive, eye tracking and corrective lens add-on is confirmed compatible with the Vive Pro. So, uh, a lot of you guys who are into VR know that you can actually hop up your VR units. They don't just, you can run them stock, but just like anything else, you can overdo them and adapt them, mod them, and increase their ability. I agree, Billy Strange has an incredible voice, uh, built for uh, broadcasting. So anyway, that's good news that those corrective lenses will work for both. <coughs> Special deal, so cdkeys.com has F1 2017 on sale right now for $13.59. So if you want to get a copy of the old before the new comes out, well, you can get it cheap now, $13. Big announcement, well, big tease from Riza. So Riza Studios, it's been quiet for a while. But today's post with this image, and that's definitely a Le Mans prototype type car that we're seeing in a blur. Uh, only thing we can really read definitively is Riza Studios. But the post says some exciting new things coming up on the horizon. So when it comes to modding groups that take the R Factor platform and build an entire game on top of it, Riza is absolutely one of the best. So it'll be e e it'll be really cool to see. Are they moving to R Factor 2? Have they built their own engine? Are they just buying a portion of an engine and building the whole thing? We'll have to stay on top of Riza. We would kind of forgot about them for a while, and now it's start to keep them back on the radar. So let's see. The last thing I have, we mentioned earlier, we talked about the NASCAR 2003 Group C mod as one of the greatest mods ever made, in my opinion. And it came at a different time in sim racing because that mod just literally changed sim racing. Years later, you had a lot more things to choose from, and it wouldn't have made the sim same impact. But when I think back on the more modern era, past uh, NASCAR 2003 days, uh, and I think of the greatest mods ever made, and I think we've talked about it and mentioned it on the show, but it was the Power and Glory mod for GTR 2. A lot of people love GTR 2. It was a very great sim. Had a lot of great things in it. But the mod, the Power and Glory mod, was one of those mods that kind of changed the face of the game. The mod was so good that it could have almost been sold as a standalone game, in my opinion. It was that good. So, just... Race Department had an article that just came out. I mean, this is very dated content, but it's their write-up on Best of Sim Racing Mod, Power and Glory for GTR 2. And I couldn't agree more than it being one of the greatest of all time. Um, what are your guys' favorite mods that have ever happened? Uh, and how big? Were they just one car? Were they a whole group of cars? Did it change the face of the game? Is there anything current that can rival Power and Glory mod for GTR 2 in terms of what it did for sim racing? Is there anything currently that can rival the Group C mod? Uh, what was the name of the groups? Uh, there were, Project Wildfire was one of the names, but was that that was the Trans Am cars? Uh, Redline was it? Team Redline? It, what? I'm not sure if it's even the same Team Redline. Team Redline mod for NR 2000. Thank you. Um, that's what, it, yeah, but it, was it the same team? I think it was like part of the team, but it wasn't team Redline. Maybe it was some of the, I don't remember, but anyway, is there anything now? Is there any mod out there? I mean, I, we did a, a segment back in the, in the day, Mod Squad, honoring the great mods because our factor was so dependent on mods. Uh, it's not quite the same as it used to be. It feels like, I mean, yes, there are great mods out there, but not quite as often not quite as plentiful and it seems like the games were are more have more depth within them which makes less need for mods if that makes any sense anyway that is the end of the show uh what else do i want to tell you about you know we've got our sim pit 
SRS series running in the Porsche 911 RSR. If you go to our website, Simpit, which is about to get a facelift, it'll take a while, but things are in the works. This site hasn't been updated in a while because it's a little broken. But one thing that does work is if you go to our leaderboard tab right here, it will take you and show you what the guys who run on the private server are posting on times. And we have a very competitive leaderboard right now. You can see I'm sitting in 10th. I actually have done a little bit of early practice. This week, I'm going to do things differently. This week, I'm going to go radio silent. This week, I'm going to turn off the chat. And after Friday night's meltdown at Nordschleife, I need to change my mental uh, capacity during racing. And I think I'm allowing too much distraction to not allow me to calm down, cool down, and focus. And that's what I need to do in racing. I'm always trying to show you guys, teach you guys, what can we do to be better what can I do to be better? Well, concentration's a factor, and I am allowing a lot of distraction into my world. But Heiko Sherman right now is looking best with a 118.462, which is very, very fast. Breaking into the 18s is flying. Uh, Chechi, 73 in second. Ricardo Mascarenas in third. You'll find Sean Sebran in fifth. Jesse Conroy in seventh. Great run by Jesse so far. Andres Castaneda. Castaneda. I'm sorry. Castaneda. Andres Castaneda in 8th, Stan Donnett in ninth. myself in 10th, me and Stan posted those laps last night, Rick Longano, I see you in 13th, Doug Hawley in 14th, and uh, should be very, very uh, good, so tonight I will be doing our practice, so tonight will be Attack the Track, oh, I put my race banner up, right image, wrong wording, but tonight at 6 p.m., not Thursday, uh, tonight at 6 p.m., we will be doing attack track. We might have something special. I've been talking to Mitchie. We might be doing uh, a better engineering and drive versus just the drive that we've been doing lately. So uh, those leaderboards, if you go to the simpit.com, right here, you'll see the, ta the leaderboard graphic right here on the right-hand side. You click that, and it'll take you right to our leaderboard and if you'd like more information on how to join us all you need to do is go to simracingsystem.com you can sign up for a free membership there there is no charge there's no charge coming it's a free membership and there is a ton of racing not just uh not just our series but there are a lot of series running like almost every hour on the hour and plenty of racing in both Assetto Corsa and Race Room. So I highly recommend, highly recommend Sim Racing System. It's a great place to find a group to race with at any time slot that you need. So, oh, Mitchie just confirmed. So today is going to be a, a engineer and drive edition of Attack the Track. I've already done. That's okay. The graphic can stay up. Oh, we are showing the leaderboard, though. Uh, we are back. So uh, here is the Sim Pit. Right here on the right-hand side is the leaderboard right above the link to buy Simpit t-shirts. You click on that link, and it takes you to our leaderboard. The 71 mod, you highly recommend. Thank you, Sky. I'm going to have to look into the 71 mod. 71 mod for what? And Paid's going to go run some uh, Seat Leon TCR. Very cool. And Zanvort. Zanvort's a very fun track. So, anyway, I could go on and on all day long with you guys just talking sim racing. Uh, so, tonight, 6 p.m., attack the track. Tomorrow, we'll be back with the pit stop. And tomorrow and Friday night, we'll have our racing. Friday, 11 a.m., and I'm going to send an email out right after the show here. The entire patron group is going to get to watch the live review of the SimCube OSW steering wheel. Uh, I'm going to film it live. They're going to get to watch that. Every mistake and all the swearing and all the frustration I go through when filming. And then I'm going to edit that down and get that video out to all of you guys. So everybody gets what, you know, every, you guys still get your proper review. It's just the patron group gets to have a little fun and clown on me and see how many mistakes I make when I actually get to do a full review live. So it should be a fun week. Lots of stuff coming. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy hump day. Get out there and do some racing. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.